at the challenge for the Labor leadership. Kevin Rudd hit back today at the conga line of cabinet ministers who have been busy demolishing his reputation and leadership style. He quoted a glowing tribute from one surprising source, Simon Crean, who has recently been among the harshest critics of the former Prime Minister. Mr Crean spoke with Chris Yulman from Melbourne. Uh, Kevin Rudd said today, and he quoted you from an article, he said that uh, you had said that he was a great chair, that he listened, that he took people's positions into account, and he summed up and he made decisions. It doesn't sound like the man you've been describing this week. <laughs> no, but I think it's instructive to look at the quote and the way in which Kevin has selectively chosen that aspect. I urge all people to go to the full report of that quote and look at what I said beforehand when I contrasted the way the Hawke-Keating cabinets functioned and lamented the fact that the Rudd one didn't function that way, then went on after that quote to make the point that given those qualities, it was a pity he did not use the cabinet more effectively. Now, I, on a number of occasions, raised those concerns with him. The argument that this wasn't raised with him is just nonsense, Chris. I raised it with him. I know others did too. Why didn't so you here, we, here we have a situation, Chris, where the, the, the Prime Minister is under attack for truthfulness. Kevin, very selectively in terms of his quoting, the trouble is I've got a good corporate memory and I also am very direct in terms of my communications. I believe the government could have been functioning better. I urged him to do it. He ignored it. That's why he's in the position he's in today. But the way he's been described this week, and even you use the Prime Minister's words, were chaotic, dysfunctional. Why didn't anyone say anything publicly? If things were that bad, because the first that the Australian people knew that there was a problem when the Prime Minister was gone, and that's become a problem for you, hasn't it? I said that back almost two years ago, Chris. This is not the first time, and last Monday was not the first time I made the criticisms of his style publicly. I made many of them privately to him beforehand and urged him to be different and urged, even said I was prepared to work um, in, so far as the uh, cabinet processes were concerned to try and make it work better. Now, look, I can make the offer. He's the Prime Minister. He has to make a judgment as to whether he uses it. But don't give me this argument that this has only just arisen now. We were prepared to keep that relatively quiet. I was prepared to go on the record and make the point. No one bothered to follow it up at the time. And I don't know why all the journalists that Kevin and his supporters were secretly canvassing to talk about this strategy for the challenge didn't also raise those concerns because they were on the public record. Are you, do you have direct evidence that Kevin Rudd has betrayed the Prime Minister's confidence? I know that uh, Kevin has been campaigning relentlessly along with his colleagues to suggest that there should be a change and that he's the only choice. For how long? Now, I think, and I think if the journalistic profession also was interested in getting balance into this debate. They ought to come forward. They don't have to name the time and circumstance. They just have to admit, like we know, it was being done. Now, here we are in circumstances in which you've got the Prime Minister trying to play by the Marcus of Queensby rules and observe the confidences, observe the understandings about the pact, as fragile as it now appears it was about working together but a prime minister cannot function if she's got a senior member of her cabinet running the stealth campaign the covert yet, campaign Green, behind her how back. would how would you feel if the confidences that you have with journalists and you certainly do have them were broken okay then all i've got to say is collectively a group of you say this was going on because all that really needs to happen, Chris, is confirmation by those he ran the stealth campaign with that it was happening. Not this nonsense that there was no campaign. I mean, there's no point telling me privately, not you particularly, but others, that it was happening. And wink, nod, what are you going to do about it? And then sitting there dumb and saying there's no evidence of it, you're the evidence. 
Let's understand what this game is. This is the Prime Ministership of the country. It's the leadership of the country. It's the destabilisation and a okay. sidetracked nation where we should and be getting thing, on with our issues. And the thing issues. that Kevin Rudd pointed and out today, speaking more, of the No, leadership. no, Chris. Yes, go on. The journalists finish. of this country have got more than a responsibility, they're more of a responsibility than hide the gossip, print it as gospel truth, and ignore those that go on the public record and somehow run the story that we're attacking his Now, integrity. Kevin Rudd said today that, that the Prime Minister had lost the trust and confidence of the Australian people. That's a fair comment, isn't it? No, I don't believe it is. Well, why does everything... I think that... that all of the polls point in that direction. Yeah, but hang on. That's a different question. That's a different question. And why are the polls pointing in that direction? Because of a relentless campaign, stealth campaign, to undermine and destabilise the government. That's why... And how do I know it works? Because I was a recipient of it. I had to put up with this in opposition for a number of months. Didn't matter how good your message was, if you could not get it out because you were fighting yourselves, then no one wanted to listen. What Simon. the people want is this situation ended. Monday will end it. The Prime Minister will win it convincingly. Kevin Rudd must do more than just accept and the finally, result. finally, how will you recover? He's got, he's got to acknowledge and respect the how, caucus. How do you recover from here? How, you have a long Labor pedigree. Your father was a member, was a Deputy Prime Minister in the Whitlam government. You have been in the Labor Party all of your life. Is this the generation that destroys that proud heritage? I hope not. Could it but be? If the, nonsense, if the nonsense doesn't end, it will. That's the problem, Chris. And I've been in this and do you think it will profession, and, and, and I've been in this pedigree, call it what you like, I've been in it too long. And I don't want to make sure that... I, I want to ensure that the investment that I've made is respected, leaves the Labor Party in a solid position, not this farce that we're going through at the moment. That's why I've spoken out this week, but it isn't the first time I've spoken All right. out. Well, Simon Crean, we'll have to leave it there and enjoy the ballet when you finally get there. And thanks for being with us. <laughs> thanks, Chris.